Tuesday, we get to talk with Nikki Chavanel about an hour later than we usually do, and we appreciate her uh, pushing the uh, the time back a little bit. Of course, Nikki is the outstanding reporter uh, and editor at hogbeat.com, covering all things Arkansas athletics, part of the Rivals Network, and got a little vacation going last week. So, Nikki, where'd you go, and uh, what did you do? Yeah, I went to uh, San Diego, my boyfriend's uh, sister. Her husband is in the Navy, and they're stationed out there uh, at the at the Naval Base. So it was a really fun time. I'd, I'd been in that area before, but never got to do, you know, any hikes or anything like that. It's a beautiful town, Smackdown. I hear San Diego is just one of the best barbecue towns in the don't, country, right? Okay, don't eat. We're not. <laughs> okay, Nick, I don't know. <laughs> How long were y'all in San Diego? Uh, we were there four days. Was no there, barbecue was, was eaten. Okay, good. <laughs> was that by choice or because San Diego sucks at barbecue? Um, it was by choice. Okay, we good. decided to See? do more seafood and, and Mexican food. Things that San Diego's probably known for. Not, nope, stinking barbecue. No, N- pot, Nikki, no. Nikki is from Texas and she lives in Arkansas. She's not eating barbecue. No. In California. Yeah. You're just trying happen. to get me fired up again. Mm. Not going to happen. But it is good to have you back, <laughs> Nikki. And, uh, you know, I wanted to get your, uh, your thoughts on the newest commit uh, for Sam Pittman's 2022 class and feels like a really big get, not just because he's a, he's an Arkansas kid and a Marion Harris from, from uh, Joe T. Robinson, but he's already gigantic and had a lot of other top-notch programs after him. So it's in-state, but also feels like somebody that, that, that very well could make a difference. Yeah, I feel like a, a dummy because I should have gone to see him this season at Joe T., I thought he would put film out. Unfortunately, he hasn't. I need to get some kind of like coaches login to go look at all their film. But uh, he he is huge. He's six foot seven. He's already uh, his rivals profile is out of date. He's listed at three thirty eight, but he's already like two sixty something. He's huge right now. So he'll probably even have to you know slim down uh, once he gets to Arkansas. But he's got plenty of time to do that. Uh, he's been on you know, college coaches radar since he was a freshman. Um, I think he's just got a really high ceiling. He'll have a lot of, you know, technical stuff to get figured out if he still looks like he did when I saw him uh, as a sophomore, but just a really solid get. He's ranked as the number one prospect in the state. So really important to, to land him. Speaking of rankings and states, I saw where Miles Rouser uh, the defensive back that uh, that they've signed for 2022 is out of Belleville, Michigan. He's ranked as the second best player in the state of Michigan by rivals. I mean, first of all, to get a kid from Michigan is one thing. For him to be that highly touted out of a out of a state that is Big Ten territory has two Big Ten programs in the state. I mean, this feels big too. Yeah, I mean, he was previously committed to Michigan. I believe his older brother plays there. Um, and he's really versatile. I mean, he's listed as a safety, but he could play corner as well. So I know the analysts really liked him as a guy uh, that will will get playing time uh, no matter where the coaches uh, slot him in. Uh, yeah, just a, a really big pickup. Um, I think that, you know, coaches um, are perhaps, you know, he's, he's got uh, – uh, kind of a an ego, I would say, and so not all uh, coaches are willing to work with that. But I think Sam Carter and Barry Odom uh, are going to just to get that talent on campus. Nikki Chavanel joining us here on halftime. Nikki, before we dive into some Razorback recruiting, I wanted to get your thoughts on this too, because like Phil mentioned, with Arkansas Texas coming up, Arkansas versus Texas football announced for a six p.m. T- uh, k- almost at tip off kickoff on ESPN. Nikki and Phil kind of brought up the idea we need something to kind of refuel this rivalry between Arkansas and Texas, and I think amongst coaches and players, I mean, with Arkansas getting so many players out of Texas, I feel like the like maybe the personal rivalry is there. But what needs to happen in your mind to maybe not to get this thing back to the way it was in the 70s and 80s, but to get this game, to get fans talking, I guess, about this big-time big, this big time game? Well, as far as I see, I mean, I see the most passionate of fans since I'm on, you know, message boards where people pay to be there. So they're, they're the diehards, but they have every bit of animosity for Texas, I think, that they had back in the day. Um, but just getting to play Texas more often uh, would, would make that a big thing, and I think um, people all over the nation would tune into that every year 
if they could get something like that going. It's just incredibly unlikely because Texas has a lot of, uh, you know, former rivals that they have to schedule every now and, and again. But uh, from what I can see, everyone's fired up about this, uh, even though they haven't played since 2014. The, the 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 I'm blanking on the kid's name just right off bat. And I've been I was trying to find the name of the 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 big offensive line recruit that could become a dark. It's all Mary a Marion. Is that right? The, the from Texas? Harris. A Marion Harris. Thank you, Phil. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. My I had a brain fart for a second. A Marion Harris being heavily recruited by Arkansas. This could be a big time gift for this Razorback team if you're able to secure this big offensive tackle coming out of Robinson. Um, you. <laughs> Well, he's, they, he's, he's already he's already committed. They got Arkansas. him. You might be it. thinking of defensive tackle uh, Nico Dallier, who is committing next month. Um, that would be really huge. And they already have Andrew Chambly, the tackle, uh, the offensive tackle from Maumel. So, uh, yeah, getting getting the, that pair, uh, just this whole class of in-state um, prospects is really big compared to what uh, normally comes out of the state. Uh, but I definitely see uh, Nico picking the Hogs at this point because he's already scheduled his official visit to Arkansas for all the way in September. Uh, Nikki, let's see. Uh, I wanted to ask about the off- the offensive tackle situation in this upcoming class. Are there going to be more that you think that might come in? They got two tackles, right, that are that are signed for twenty twenty two. Um, for. You mean committed? <laughs> so they have three offensive tackles coming in this summer uh, from the 2021 class. I know it's a confusing time because they're offering a lot of 2023s. The 2022s are committed, and the 2021s are already signed. Um, but they have three offensive tackles coming in, all played tackle at that level, but I'm not sure they'll all uh, stay there. I think uh, Terry Wells is a guy that can move uh, to guard. Um, I'm not sure any of these guys immediately contribute. Uh, I don't don't think that they need to necessarily because uh, they're returning every starter from last year's team, and they already have quite a few position battles going on. So I'm just not sure the incoming freshmen will be able to compete much. So now that summer school starts pretty soon, we're going to have all these, you know, the the ones who could not enroll early, they'll be coming in for the summertime uh, to start getting acclimated with college life and get involved in the in the weight program and, and, and conditioning program and everything else before camp starts. So uh, pr- pretty soon it's going to be, a, I wouldn't say a heavy influx. You got you, how many players are coming in that did not, that weren't able to enroll early? Yeah, they had 13 early enrollees. So they actually had more uh, in this past semester enroll than they will uh, this weekend. They have 11 coming in this weekend. So there's still another quarterback. Another running back, A.J. Green, he's, you know, very uh, highly touted, really fast kid. I think he uh, he was in line to win the 100 this weekend at the Oklahoma, uh, you know, track and field championships, but he accidentally got fourth. Uh, so he was disappointed in that. But that's definitely one of the guys I'm looking at to contribute when he comes in uh, this weekend. As far as the two quarterbacks that are in the class, Lucas Coley, I guess you'd have to say, is ahead of Landon Rogers just because he was an early enrollee and Rogers is coming on, um, in the summertime. You know, I know there was, there was a lot of talk. I know Rogers improved his completion percentage as his final year, but he's more of a, more of a runner. Is, is this someone that is guaranteed to be married to the quarterback position or is this someone that potentially you know, if it does look like Lucas Coley might be the quarterback of the future after K.J. Jefferson, you know, would you see Rodgers potentially looking at a at – a, could he work at a different position, I guess, is the right question. That's definitely something that people talk about with him because they have so many younger quarterbacks. They have Cade Renfro as well, who was on scholarship at Ole Miss. So I, I kind of think he'll eventually be put on scholarship here if he sticks around they just have so many young guys that yeah people do talk about that i mean he could be a tight end he'd have to put on uh quite a bit of weight at this point to uh fit into that room but uh that's that's what people talk about uh most i think although he could also be a receiver just a a classic receiver Mm -hmm. so just a couple weeks left in this dead period and we started counting down uh, with you a couple of weeks ago are you? Uh, are do you feel ready for the massive influx of 
official visits and the schedule that you've uh, that you have uh, pieced together of, of all of these kids that are going to get a look at Arkansas for the first time ever? Oh yeah, I mean the kids are excited, um, and I'm happy for them because I know it, it's been a you know a tough deal for a lot of these kids to have to make decisions without uh, seeing the coaches in person. So uh, I'm ready to do the work of all these you know official visit write ups. Uh, you know, we do one for every single recruit, um, and it'll be likely there will be some commitments in there, I think. So, okay. uh, you know, don't want to be subscribed to Hogby for sure. Well, last thing to, to, to touch on here, and we haven't gotten into it too much, but I'd like to uh, sometime in the next week or so. This uh, flagship program uh, that the University of Arkansas Athletics Department has put together along with some of the, you know, along with the Walton School of Business and the major corporations around here feels like I've read some uh, analysts, college athletics analysts that, that, that that have said that they believe that Arkansas is kind of ahead of the game as far as uh, the program that they've put together here. And this is such a marketing heavy area because of the big corporations here. I just wonder, like this flagship program, do you see this as, as potentially something that could lead to an uptick in recruiting, specifically at football? Because I think basketball's at a really high level there, baseball's at a really high level there, and and as far as compared to the rest of the SEC, like you know, football's trying to catch up. I think it could take a little while. Like we're gonna have to see how these things even play out. Um, because, you know, they can't really um, profit off of the Razorback logo. So they really do have to be a very recognizable player. So someone like Traylon Burks, I think, could easily, you know, do a commercial for the local, uh, you know, auto shop if he wanted to. People would know who he is without him wearing the Razorback gear. Um, But in general, like even being able to profit from a YouTube account, something like that, uh, I do think that eventually uh, kids will start to realize that Arkansas is a really good market for that because the fans are just so loyal. and They'll subscribe to your stuff. They'll watch it even if it's not that good. Uh, like They're just very, very loyal. And, um, yeah, once once things start getting the, getting going, I don't know how it's all going to play out uh, because, you know, the NCAA isn't making this stuff okay. It's just that the, some of the states are legalizing it, so... Uh, I don't know how that how that power struggle is going to go. Yeah. All right, Nikki, we'll leave it at that. Appreciate your time.